Well, here we are. Potentially the final moment we will be opening this save file. The Hemel Hempstead Town story is complete, but we've resigned, as you can see on the screen now, and we have skipped five years in the future. So what on earth has happened to Hemel Hempstead since we've been gone? Let's go and see. Yes, hello and welcome along to the five-year look back from this FM22 One Club story with Hemel Hempstead Town from me, Daniel. It's the Tudor Times in its final moment and we are coming back to see how Hemel Hempstead and how English football has got on five years after we left it. We left after a crowning moment, both for us and having sent Chelsea down to the Championship so there should be some stories as we go along here. If you're looking forward to finding out what's gone on, then please do chuck a thumbs up on it. I want your predictions down in the comments early. Have Hemel Hempstead continued to fight in the top six? Have they continued to win trophies? Or have they just gradually dropped down the league? What do you think? Are we going to get any massive surprises? And will Chelsea be back in the Premier League? If you want to know the answer to all of that, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on and stay tuned for the rest of this episode. We've got more FM content coming every day. You can find all the other playlists in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel for regular live streams and links to all the other platforms and to ways to support the channel are down in the description below. But it's time to look at Hemel Hempstead Town. There is no point putting anything off. I do want to show you one little thing though before we go to Hemel which I didn't show at the end of the last episode in my excitement, which is the Hall of Fame. Because this was a very big year for us. We did not make it into the top 20 for the world, which you'd probably expect. We weren't there for long enough at the top level. We didn't make it into the top 20 for the continent, probably for the same reason. For the nation, though, we were in at number eight. We did really well. We're above Pep. We're above Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and just behind Kenny Daglish. Four domestic divisions, eight domestic cups. It doesn't have the Champions League, of course, because that is on the nationality one, where we are up in fourth place, having won a Europa League and a Champions League too. It's not a bad honours list at the end of the day, is it? And we're just behind Frank Lampard, who seems to have had a great career up in third. And look who else is there. It's our head coach manager. We didn't manage to overtake them. Just behind in second and fourth place, respectively. Frank Lampard's with Bayern Munich, so he's had Ricketts, Ricker, and clearly plenty of titles alongside. But let's go straight to Hemel Hempstead Town. This is the story of the day. You've told me in the comments, hopefully by this point, where you think they are. Now let's see who's right. I'm going to say they're still on the fringes of that top six battle. Wow, I owe Mikel Arteta, the new Hemel Hempstead Town manager, and the club as a whole an apology, because Hemel Hempstead Town our Premier League champions five years after we left. Now, we saw when we've done build a nations that other teams just sell their players quickly and they end up falling back down. But in terms of England, it looks like that power has allowed them to stay on top. Mikel Arteta is now a favoured personnel. Gianni Gilby must still be there because he's a legend alongside me. And Callum Tatham's an icon. He's the man I talked about signing when I was leaving. If we hadn't won the Champions League that year, I would have signed that lad. And he is now there and is an icon. Not many of our players are in those top two, which is a little bit interesting. Considering we had some real legends about there, I'm guessing a lot of the younger players maybe got sold on. I'm thinking of a Stamatis, who I'd immediately assume would be in there. I'm looking at the centre-halves, although it's very hard for defenders to get on this list. Kevin Herve has made it, though, in fairness. So let's see what has happened in the Premier League this season. Am I Amsterdam Town have won it? But who's behind them and by how much? They are three points ahead of Spurs. The Newcastle are in there still. Southampton, Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester United. City down to eighth. Chelsea back in the Premier League and in tenth. Gianni Gilby, third top scorer in the league. Mailton at Arsenal is the top scorer. Another legend that we managed in this save. So many good players about. And Mikel Murillo and Drecker. It's a very familiar set of names so far from what we can see. Oh, look at the top right. I didn't notice. Wow. Hemel Hempstead have got better without us. Manchester United won the title the first year after we went. Maybe a, a poor management choice if they didn't go straight to Arteta. Maybe that little bit of getting over it period. But they've won four Premier League titles in a row, which makes it six in seven years. 
I think this might be the first time I've seen a team get stronger after I've left and the AIs come in. And I mean really strong. They are dominating English football. It will be interesting to see if that's been replicated in Europe. We'll get to that later. That's a real shock to me. Did anyone predict that down in the comments? You're a genius if you did. Let's go back to Hemel Hempstead Town. Let's go to the players. How many of the squad is familiar and how many is brand new? So Mario is familiar. Stuart Davidson, someone I wanted to sign. He's there with Zarouk and Davris and Drecker, Herv, Mellon. Class is still there. That's a pretty interesting one. Alberto Vass, Miguel Coronel, Harun has come back for a second stint. And Joe's there, a dog root and Gianni Gilby. I don't know if you've noticed this at the bottom of the screen. I have never seen a player value like this. Gianni Gilby's maximum value is £433 million. His finishing stat is 15. That's incredible. He scored 131 league goals in 205 league appearances. Absolutely outstanding. Let's have a look at a dog root alongside him because he was pretty good. Still is as well, but mainly a substitute now. Wow. Must be the best player in the world, Gilby. Won a Ballon d'Or under us. I'm sure he's got a few more than one. I'm pretty impressed that there's still a lot of familiarity in that squad. And the thing that probably impresses me the most is a lot of the players that I was looking at say, yes, I'd like to sign these next year. They've actually gone and got them and made that squad stronger. So really good effort from Hemel Hempstead Town. Let's see how they've got on both on the schedule and the transfer market front. We'll start by seeing what they've won in the five years since we were here. So let's go to the competition screen. No more Champions League titles. One runners-up medal after us, but we still have the only one in their history. The World Club Championship hasn't been won either. They finished third place in that. They won the European Super Cup just after we left. They've won the Premier League four years in a row. They've won two more FA Cups, three more Carabao Cups. So domestically, we're talking about pure dominance. If you take those three competitions, the 15 trophies available, they've won nine of them. And Hemel Hempstead Town are dominant. And I mean really dominant. And I think this is probably the testament to the whoever's come in Arteta and we'll see what happened in between then. I'm not sure I could have replicated that. I'm not sure my record would have been better. And I feel that is a huge endorsement of the job that Arteta's done. He did come straight in. So he had the disappointment first year. Let's go and see actually, where did they finish the first season? Oh, fourth. So they were in the top four and then they've just blitzed it since. That's incredible. Let's have a look at their best prospect. He's not great, but he's okay. He's on loan at Oxford. I'm so surprised to see that. It's not something we've become used to in this save. So knowing that they've won most of the Cups as well, the big news is what's happened on the transfer front. Because if we go back to the year we left, which was 2039, and look at that summer, they bought Tatham in straight away, which is what I would have done. They bought Everton Louise, who's not my type of striker, but is a really world-class player. And they also bought in a couple of other big signings. One from Juventus, Giannino, proper good right back, would have only been 21 there as well. He came in the following summer, sorry. But that's incredible. What is a bit of a shame is that a lot of players have gone out. So Srubeck and De Vita, that one frustrates me, went in the first summer. He was a class player. Going further down... Prince Shabinda and Carlos Torres went in the January, but they got good money for them both. Dean Arthur went on loan to Chelsea in the Championship. He's now at Leeds. And that's it. So it wasn't a complete dismantling of the squad. And other than De Vita, I wouldn't say any of them shock me. If we move on to the following season, we see two big signings. 100 million for Stuart Davidson, the centre-half, and Najar, an attacking midfielder. But then they didn't have wingers. And if they wanted to play that way, that makes sense. They actually got £110 million from Bayern for Louise, which is a really good deal. So they've been pretty proficient in the transfer market again. £44 million for Hanifan, £50 million for Anders, £50 million for Chauvin, and £15 million for Azoma. They've recruited well and they've still made profits for the most part. Go to the following year. Ostomatis went for 181 million to Real Madrid. Transfer record broken. He's on 550 grand a week. They also sold Dean Arthur for 46 million. Pellegrino for 14 and a half, the goalkeeper. 
and just bought in Beadle from Chelsea for 110, who is a top class centre midfielder. They also bought in some free agents, one from Barcelona, who's now 38, but probably offered them a good year, and a youngster from Copenhagen. I'm really impressed by the way they've worked here. The following season, they did spend more than they bought in this year, but it's sensible business. Six squad players in, a couple out, Carlos Martin being a big one, £46.5 million. And even got £1.6 million for that old boy they got in on a free. And in this season, they bought Jordi Colas, who I'm sure was one of our youngsters, wasn't he? So did they sell him and then bring him back? Yeah, that's the one bit of bad business. Sold for five hundred and fifty grand, bought back for eight point two million, sold for eight and three quarters. Not the most sensible work that, but still. Ah, he actually left the club two months after he joined. Look at that. Not even two months. He was bought the twenty eighth of July, twenty forty three, and then sold thirty first of August, twenty forty three. Afiz Agbar went for eight million. I really thought he was going to go on to bigger and better things than that. And then a couple of other young signings, but not much that really gets you too excited. It's been very sensible management. They've dominated English football. They haven't won a Champions League, but they've reached another final. But overall, Hemel Hempstead are the stars of England, so I'm really impressed. Let's have a very quick look at what happened with Chelsea, and we'll run through the English divisions and the European trophies. But otherwise, Hemel Hempstead Town, absolutely superb. Time to review English football then and let's start in the Premier League where we saw that Hemel Hempstead are six-time champions. That's the big shock of it all. But there's not too many otherwise. We can see Chelsea are back in there, but it's all championship and Premier League clubs. So you can't be shocked by anything in that division. What I will say is that Chelsea seem to have recovered and they are now established in the Premier League. We'll take a bit more of a look at them in a minute. So if we go down to the championship, we have got a big surprise. Burton beating Brighton and Hove Albion in the final. They are coming up to the Premier League. Must be the first time for Burton Albion. Let's go and have a look at their general. Yes, it is. I mean, they've got those state-of-the-art St. George's Park facilities, but still, that's a pretty incredible effort to become a Premier League side. Other than that, you've got Bromley going down at the bottom of the division, who are a side that benefited from being our feeder club. Chesterfield, another side starting in non-league. They're in mid-table, alongside my club, Luton Town, who seem to be doing all right in this save. How did Chelsea do the year they were in there? Just want to go back and see that. Oh, 114 points. It was pretty easy for them, wasn't it? So they bounced back very quickly. Neil Bath must still be in charge. Let's go and have a look at him. Yes, of course he is. Neil Barth, 21 years in charge, one as a caretaker, 20 as an interim, and he is still going strong. Only on nine grand a week. Maybe that's where Chelsea are saving their money. Let's go down to League Two and see what happened there last season. Uh, league One, sorry, is the next league we're on. Swansea beat Oldham in the playoff final. We've got Wickham Millwall going down, a championship club. Ebbs Fleet are in there. They've made it up three divisions since the start of the save. Uh, Stockport in there too, Wrexham in the playoffs, lots of sides coming up from non-league there. Sheffield Wednesday stuck in the bottom half. Let's get down to League 2, where we have got a much more traditional final of Port Vale Tranmere. Woking have won the division, and to give you a little bit of a sneak preview, as a bonus for watching this episode, Woking is one of two contenders to be our live stream save on Twitch next year, so you might be seeing an awful lot more of that team. York have gone back down out the Football League, joined by Gillingham at the bottom of the table. Dulwich Hamlet in the Football League, Maidstone in there too, Chester. We've also got Wigan in League 2 with Blackpool sides that started or are in the Championship now in real life. And Solihull Moors back up to League 1. They've been pretty solid throughout this save. Let's move down to the National League, where Accrington, with a brilliantly named goalscorer up front, have returned to the Football League with a playoff final win. They are there alongside Morecambe. Rochdale miss out in the playoffs, as do Swindon Town. We've got Crewe and Bradford. Bradford in the National League. That's a pretty big one as well. We had Birmingham in the head coach save after 10 years. And after 20-odd here, it's Bradford City. who are languishing in non-league. Scumthorpe in 20th place. Better than they're doing in real life at the minute. And St. Neots, which isn't a huge distance away from Luton have made their way up to non-league's top division. Let's go down to the National League North, where we have got Brackley beating Marine, the FA Cup heroes of lockdown, in the North playoff final. We've then got, wow, 
what's going on geographically here? Boreham Woods and Stevenage, Stevenage round the corner from Luton, and Boreham Woods is in London, or essentially in London. You've got London buses, you've got the Oyster card, and they are somehow in the National League North, both missing out in the playoffs. So not a great stage for local football to me. But otherwise, there's not too many huge shocks, apart from Cheltenham, who started in League One and are now down in the National League North. They've had three relegations. Harrogate have had two as well. Some very interesting stories in there, both footballing-wise and geography-wise. Let's get down to the National League South. In that league, we've got Oxford City beating Dorking, our FM20 side, and lots of South London clubs relegated. Yeovil in there as well. But you've got Dagenham and Redbridge, Barnet, who are just next to Borehamwood virtually, and Sutton as well. Wealdstone there, and Dover, our head coach heroes this year. What an unfortunate story that is. I tell you what I did miss, actually. It's just occurred to me that I saw it in League 2 and said I was going to say something and didn't. Slough Town finished sixth in League 2. Now, they're a side that saved us in our first full year of the head coach. We got sacked twice in a row, and then they saved us in the National League South, gave us a job. And gave us something to build from. Some very strange situations going on in England. Let's quickly look at the FA Cup and League Cup for the ones that Hemel didn't win. And then we'll finish by looking at the European trophies. Well, I wouldn't say there's any huge surprises there, are there? We've got two for Tottenham, two for Hemel, one for Manchester United. What I do want to question is the Scottish Cup having the second highest reputation of any cup competition in the world. Has Scottish football gone and had a big day? I'm going to have to go and have a look in a minute. Let's start with the League Cup very quickly though. We have got Arsenal, Southampton and three for Hemel. So again, sides that have regularly been in that top six. What about Community Shields for Hemel? They've won three out of the five. Let's go back to the big story of the Scottish Cup. What is going on with Scottish football? Rangers beat Dundee United. They've won the Scottish Premiership. Scottish football is ranked seventh, so it's not had that huge growth up to the top three or four. Just seems the cup has gone really well. So fair play to them; they are developing nicely. Has finished on the Champions League, Europa League, and Europa Conference. You may have seen it's licensed in FM23, but for now, let's have a look at these versions and see who's been winning. Well then, two for PSG, including the year after we won it and retired. We also got United beating Hemel in the final in 2041. They won it back to back from there. And then we've also got Bayern Munich and of course PSG again. Highest average rating as a TNS player up there. I'm guessing they didn't get to the group stages. No, it was just a little bit of qualifying action for him. But build a nation, we're going to be back in those early stages next season. So always nice to keep an eye on. German Marrera, second top of the assist chart still. He somehow got even better at 33. Let's move on to the Europa League. Something we won once with Hemel. Last five years, English dominance. Two for Spurs, two for Liverpool. Just the one for Real Madrid. Even the years before we went and since we won it. You got Southampton, Arsenal, Liverpool and Borussia Dortmund won it the year after us. Let's move further down to the Europa Conference. Newcastle with a couple, Norwich with one, City with one, Sassuolo and Wolfsburg breaking the English dominance. Newcastle won 5-0 in the final against Fenerbahce. They've got a pretty good Brazilian striker up there too. Let's finish off with the international competitions, the Euros and the World Cup. And then we're going to bid an emotional farewell to this save which has served us so well over the last 11 months. Let's get to the World Cup. The French dominance that we saw in the other bookmarks has returned with a win against England in the final in 2042. Spain and Brazil in the mix with one apiece. Bit surprised to not see Uruguay do better given the generation they've had in recent decades, but that's pretty impressive, isn't it? China are hosting the 2046 one and France will be the holders. Let's move on to the European Championship. It is this summer, and Ireland, Scotland, Italy and Spain is one of the groups. That's pretty insane, isn't it? You had France win it in 24, then Italy, Portugal, Spain, Germany. So the big nations sharing them out. And it does dispel the myth about England having the league loaded. We've only got the UK loaded, and it may have benefited. You can see Scotland and Wales both making it. But it has not benefited England in the major tournaments. They have not won a thing. So pretty impressive from some of Europe's international giants. And that is where we are going to leave this save. And I must say, it's left with surprise for me. Because I did not expect 
to see the Premier League in the position it's in. Let's just get it up to finish again, just so we can reflect on it, because it is a pretty monumental moment. The English Premier Division, Hemel Hempstead Town, have won it four years in a row out of the five we've left. That is pretty epic and so unexpected. Normally, we've criticised the AI for how they've fallen away. And if I show you the points finishes as we go through this conclusion, three points clear this year, 10 points clear last year, six points clear the year before, nine points clear the year before that. Not only have they been winning it regularly, they've been winning it far more comfortably than I did. So they deserve an awful lot of praise. Even the year they didn't win it, they were three points off second. And that was the first year adapting to life without us. So Hemel Hempstead Town, you could argue, have got stronger since we left the football club. Let me know down in the comments if you agree, if you're surprised, or any other things that stood out to you. I mean, even that year they finished fourth, they lost the least games in the league. Just had the same problem I did with draws. If you enjoyed the episode and the look back, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Have you ever had a more successful AI side after you've left the club? Because I don't remember one doing that. If you want to stay up to date with what's next on the channel, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. A few FM23 themed top threes coming up in the next few weeks. And Fireborg, of course, continues. The playlist is up in the eye above. You can also find the Twitch channel there for more regular live streams. We've got one more little save plan before FM23. And links for all the ways to support the channel and the other platforms in the description below. But above my head now is the latest F1 highlights video. It was an incredible race. And if you're any fan of it, please do give it a go. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. And I'll see you back here again next time tomorrow for Viborg, which returns as normal. See you there. <laughs>